Amazon Workspaces is a secure, flexible, and cost-effective virtual desktop service. Workspaces support multiple authentication options, including SAML 2.0. In today's video, we will be diving deep into certificate-based authentication for Workspaces, which provide your end users with a seamless, single sign-on experience. We will configure the AWS infrastructure required for certificate-based authentication, as well as the steps required for your Windows environment to allow the certificates to be trusted by your organization. I'm Robert Fountain, a Senior EUC Specialist Solutions Architect with AWS. In this video, we'll briefly discuss cert what certificate-based authentication is, we'll go through the process and setup of the configuration of CBA, and we will show the end user experience during authentication. So let's get started. To get started, we are going to create an S3 bucket to be utilized as our certificate revocation list for our private certificate authority. Provide a unique name for your bucket, leave ACLs disabled, and block all public access. Next, we'll create a CloudFront distribution which will point to our S3 certificate revocation list. This will ensure our certificate revocation list is accessible securely from the internet without exposing our S3 bucket to the public. Create a new CloudFront distribution. From the origin domain list, select your S3 bucket you just created. Enter a name or keep the one that's generated automatically for you. Under the Origin Access section, select Origin Access Control Settings, then select Create New OAC. Enter a name, keep the signing behavior and origin type as the defaults, and select Create. You can leave the default cache behavior and function associations the same. Under Web Application Firewall, select Do Not Enable a Security Protection, keep the defaults for the rest of the options, and select Create Distribution. Now that we have our S3 bucket and CloudFront distribution, we need to allow our distribution access to the contents of our bucket, and we need to allow our private certificate authority the ability to write revocation data to our S3 bucket. To do this, we'll modify our bucket policy to allow this access. First, select the bucket and then select the permissions tab. Scroll down to the bucket policy and select edit. The bucket policy defined here will allow the AWS Private Certificate Authority the ability to write the certificate revocation data to the S3 bucket we created before. Additionally, it allows the CloudFront distribution the ability to read objects from the bucket. Copy the policy and paste it into the policy block on the bucket and save your changes. The next step is to create a certificate authority using the AWS Private CA. For this step, we will be utilizing the AWS CLI. First, we'll create two text files that will define our certificate configuration and certificate revocation options. The CA underscore config.txt file contains our certificate information. The revoke underscore config.txt file contains the information for our certificate revocation list. Create both of these files and save them to a local directory on your computer. Using the AWS CLI, we will create our certificate authority, supplying the CA underscore config file for our certificate authority configuration and our revoke underscore config file for our revocation configuration. Note that our certificate type is subordinate and our usage mode is short lived certificate. Additionally, note that you must supply a tag key of EUC hyphen private hyphen CA in order to utilize this certificate authority for your workspaces deployment. After entering the CLI command, you will see a confirmation that your certificate authority has been created. Additionally, you can navigate to the AWS Private CA console and see your newly created certificate authority there. Now that we have our certificate authority created, we're going to create our subordinate template. These steps are specific to Active Directory certificate services. If you have different enterprise PKI services for your organization, follow the vendor instructions for that service. On a Windows computer with certificate services installed, launch the cert serve MSC, expand the root CA, open the context menu and select manage. Find the subordinate certificate authority template, open the context menu and duplicate the template. In the general tab, change the name to private CA dash subordinate certificate authority. In the security tab, add a domain user you would later use to create the subordinate request and select the box to enroll for the permissions. Return to the certificate template, open the context menu and select new certificate template to issue. 
select the new private CA, subordinate certificate authority you just created, and select OK. Launch the AWS Certificate Manager console and select your private CA you created previously. Choose Actions, Install CA Certificate, select External Private CA, and then copy the CSR for the CA that is presented. Select the certificate and choose Copy. Using a web browser, navigate to your certificate web enrollment server to request a new certificate. Paste the CSR into the Base64 encoded certificate request field, select the Private CA Subordinate Certificate Authority template, and select Submit. The certificate should then be generated. Select the Base64 encoded option and download both the certificate and the certificate chain. From an administrative command prompt, you'll need to utilize OpenSSL to create the PEM file from the certificate you just downloaded. Once created, open the subordinate.pem file with the text editor and then head back to the private CA console. Below the CSR field that we generated previously, there are two fields, one for the certificate body and one for the certificate chain. Copy the top portion of the PEM starting with the begin certificate identifier and ending with the end certificate identifier into the certificate body field. Paste the bottom portion of the PEM starting with the begin certificate identifier and ending with the end certificate identifier into the certificate chain field and save your changes. We now have an active subordinate certificate authority for our certificate-based authentication. Select the certificate authority, select actions and get CA certificate. Export the certificate body to a file and copy the file to a domain computer with certificate services installed. From an administrator command prompt, publish the certificate into both the root CA store and the NT auth CA store. Allow time for publishing the certificates to your domain. The exact time will vary depending on the size of your AD site topology. Our last step before testing is to enable certificate-based authentication on our directory. From the Workspaces console, select directories from the left column. Select your directory, scroll to the Authentication section, and select Edit. Enable the Certificate-Based Authentication checkbox and select your Active Private Certificate Authority from the drop-down list and save your changes. To test that Certificate-Based Authentication is working, we will connect to a workspace, sign in with SAML, and test the process. You'll see that once we authenticated to our SAML provider, we were passed directly to our workspace's session without the need to enter our credentials again. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found this content useful. Be sure to check out the description for some additional resources you can reference, and be sure to check out our other videos for more AWS end-user computing content.